Well, this is Roger, and um, it is Easter, and I have an Easter surprise. You see these different colors in that field, this circular polarized field? That's called a Higgs. And there's particles streaming through here, creating that field. They have been accelerated, and it forces the field to, to expose itself to these new cameras. Absolutely fabulous. Cell phone cameras. Now, this is a thumb held up against the sun and taking the shot of it. There's blue, green, red, blue, green, red, blue, green, red. Those are the primary colors that make up all the colors that we see. And they are different sized particles, is my statement. And all the things that come down towards us from the heavens are in this form. Now let me just show you something else. Now you saw what I showed you. Do you see that white Higgs field coming down? And then the separation of the three colors of light? One more exceedingly better than the other? This is a Higgs boson. I guess what they call that? God particle. And that, my friends, is a God particle. That is a Higgs boson. And these are the three separations of color. It's called color um, chromodynamics, I believe. It's leptons, quarks, and that's what they are. There's three different quarks. They're the three different leptons. There are more quarks that are bigger. These are the small quarks. These are the ones that, can, that crash and give us light that we can see. Red cannot displace electrons. Green in its upper energy levels can. Blue will do it every single time. So this is, is um, something that seems to have been known. And there's these kind of patterns all around the world. There's, they, they are everywhere, these kind of circular disk patterns. All right, this is a book called Pistis Sophia. It's a very ancient text about Jesus coming back to earth and, and discoursing with his disciples for 11 years telling them all the stories of the eons and the ages and the, I mean it goes deep deep if you can understand it God bless you listen to this you saw this the, the light but the disciples sat together in fear and were in exceedingly great agitation and were afraid because of the great earthquake which took place and they wept together saying what then will be peradventure the Savior will destroy all regions Thus saying, they wept together. While they then said this and wept together, then on the ninth hour of the morrow the heavens opened, and they saw Jesus descend, shining most exceedingly, and there was no measure for his light in which he was, for he shone more radiantly than at the hour when he had ascended to the heavens, so that men in the world cannot describe the light which was on him, and it shot forth light rays in great abundance, and there was no measure for its rays, and its light was not alike together, but it was of divers kind and of divers type, some rays being more excellent than others, and the whole light consisted together. It was of threefold kind, and the one kind was more excellent than the other. The second, that in the midst, was more excellent than the first, which was below, and the third, which was above them all, was more excellent than the two which were below. And the first glory, which was placed below them all, was like to the light which had come over Jesus before he had ascended into the heavens, and was now, like only itself in its field. You've seen the separation, the three colors, you've seen the statements in the text, and now I want you to see something else. This is interesting because there's usually a face in the middle of these. Many, many, many of them had these these glows around them. Now, the twelve apostles were supposed to have been been set up by Jesus. He, that's what it says in this in this Pisa Sophia text. It's just unbelievable. Now, maybe it's believable. Maybe it is unbelievable. Maybe, maybe it's not true. But I'm finding a lot of things in there that resonate with me. Maybe I'm going to miss something. But I'm, there's a lot to see in there, and it's very difficult to go through. But I see this light halos around all of these religious icons. All of them, they had the halos around them. Now, 
were they supposed to be from light too? I know the apostles were. They were not of this earth. They were light creatures. They were light beings, just like Jesus was. Now, I don't know about all these other guys. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I think that's Nero. I don't know what he was up to. Or he's got a trident. Maybe it was Poseidon or somebody. Who knows? But, let me see. It just says religious iconography. And it is. You see it all over the place. So, I'm going with that, that the light we are looking at, the light that you saw coming down, I can't see anything other than what, what, it's what Jesus said, what it says in that text. Well, that's all I got to say. Happy Easter. Okay, now if you're a scientist and you think that I am just a silly person talking about ancient silliness, come up and look at this. You cannot explain hydrogen nucleus with the current atomic Bohr model theory. It just doesn't work. Electron flood theory is unity. It, does, it solves everything. These are the quarks. They're a small chunk, a bigger chunk, and a large chunk. Small, medium, large. That smashes electrons out every time. That can, that cannot. There's three different colors. They make up the white, just as I showed. There's upspin and downspin. That allows for half particles and third particles being added so you can get your up third and halves and, and all these different neutrinos and particles that they talk about. Very simple. They're right there. These are the three regions of light. And these are their different atomic masses, their different frequencies, and their different weights. Everything in the universe is made of this two sets of particles, an up and a down. There's 1,836 total particles, 918 and 918 in a, in a photon, and a proton. There's 1,837 in a neutron which adds one extra electron, which keeps the additional electrons in their orbits around the nucleus. Electron flood theory solves everything. And it accounts for the colors, and it accounts for the things I'm talking about that were written in ancient text. So if you think they're silly, good for you.